Chapter 27, Part 2. Back in my room, I find the silver box where it fell inside one of my winter boots. I open it up and take out the microcard with all of Xander's information and the courtship guidelines. If there hadn't been a mistake, if I'd just seen his face and everything had been normal, none of this would have happened. I wouldn't have fallen in love with Kai and the choice wouldn't have been so hard to make in the sort. Everything would have been fine. Everything can still be fine. If the sort is what I suspect, if Kai leaves for a better life, will I pick up the pieces of my life here? The biggest piece, my match with Xander, would not be hard to shape a life around. I could love him. I do love him. And because I do, I have to tell him about Kai. I do not mind stealing from the society, but I will not steal from Xander any longer, even if it hurts. I have to tell him. Because either way, whichever life I build has to be built on truth. Thinking of telling Xander hurts almost as much as, of, as thinking of losing Kai. I roll over and hold the tablet container tight in my palm. Think of something else. I remember the first time I saw Kai on top of that little hill, leaning back, sun on his face, and I realized that is when I fell in love with him. I didn't lie to him after all. I didn't see him differently because I saw his face on the port screen the morning after my match. I saw him differently because I saw him outside, unguarded for a moment, with eyes the color of sky in the evening before it goes down into dark. I saw him seeing me. Lying in bed, my body and soul bruised and tired, I realized that the officials are right. Once you want something, everything changes. Now I want everything, more and more and more. I want to pick my work position, marry who I choose, eat pie for breakfast and run down a real street instead of on a tracker, go fast when I want and slow when I want, decide which poems I want to read, what words I want to write. There is so much I want. I feel it all so much that I am a weight, that I am water, a river of want, pooled in the shape of a girl named Kasha. Most of all, I want Kai. We're running out of time, Kai says. I know. I've been counting the days, too. Even if Kai's new work position is still here in the city, the summer leisure activities are almost over. I won't see Kai nearly as much. I allow myself to daydream for a few seconds. What if his new position is one that allows him more time? He could come to all the Saturday night activities. Only a couple of weeks of hiking left. That's not what I mean, he says, moving closer. Don't you feel it? Something's changing. Something's happening. Of course I feel it. For me, everything is changing. His eyes are wary, as though he still feels watched. Something big, Kasha, he says, and then he whispers softly. I think the society is having trouble with their war on the borders. What makes you say that? I have a feeling, he says, from what you told me about your mother, from the shortage of officials during free rec hours, and there are changes coming at work. I can tell. He glances at me and I duck my head. Do you want to tell me why you were there? He asks gently. I swallow. I've been wondering when he would want to know. It was a real life sort. I had to sort the workers into two groups. I see, he says, and he waits to see if I will say more. And I wish I could, but I can't get the words out. Instead, I say, you haven't given me any more of the story. What happened after the officials came to get you? When did that happen? I know it wasn't too long ago because... My voice trails off. Kai ties a red cloth on the tree slowly, methodically, and then he looks up. After years of seeing only surface emotions from him, the new and deeper ones startle me sometimes. The expression on his face now is not one I have seen before. What's wrong? I ask. I'm afraid, he says simply, of what you're going to think. About what? What happened? After everything he's been through, Kai's afraid of what I might think? It was in the spring. They came to talk with me at work, pulled me aside into a room there. They asked if I ever wondered what my life would be like if I weren't an aber aberration. Kai's jaw tightens at this, and I feel sorry for him. He glances up and sees it on my face, and his jaw becomes even more set. He doesn't. He does not want my pity. So I turn my face away to listen. I said I never thought about it much. I said I didn't worry about things I couldn't change. They told me there had been a mistake. My data had been entered into the matching pool. Your data? I asked, surprised. But the official told me it was a mistake on the microcard. Kai's picture where it shouldn't be. She told me that he hadn't been entered into the pool. She lied. The air was much bigger than she said it was. Kai keeps talking. I'm not even a full citizen. They said the whole incident was completely irregular. He smiles. 
a bitter twist to his mouth that it hurts me to see. Then they showed me a picture, the girl who would have been my match if I weren't what I am. Kai swallows. Who was she? I ask. My voice sounds harsh, grating. Don't say that it was me. Don't say that it was me. Because if it, because then I will know that you saw me because they told you to look. You, he says. And now I see. Kai's love for me, which I thought was pure and unblemished by any officials or data or matching pools, is not. They have touched even this. I feel like something is dying, ruined beyond repair. If the officials orchestrated our whole love affair, the one thing in my life I thought happened in spite of them, I can't finish the thought. The forest around me blurs into green, and without the red flakes marking the way, I would not know my way down. As it is, I tear at them wildly, pulling them off the branches. Kasha, he says behind me. Kasha, why does it matter? I shake my head. Kasha, he calls after me. You're keeping something from me, too. A whistle sounds sharp and clear below us. We have come so far, but never made it to the top. I thought you were eating lunch at the Arboretum, Xander says. The two of us sit together in the meal hall at second school. I changed my mind, I tell him. I wanted to eat here today. The nutrition personnel frowned at me when I asked for one of the extra meals they keep on hand, but after checking my data, they handed over the meal without further comment. They must have seen I hardly ever do this. Or maybe there's some other flag on my data that I can't think about right now, not after the revelation from Kai. I realize how much food my container holds this time, now that it's a general portion and not labeled specifically for me. My portions have been getting smaller. What purpose does that serve? Am I too fat? I look down at my arms and legs, strong from all the hiking. I don't think so. And I realize again how distracted my parents must be. Under normal circumstances, they would have noticed my smaller portions and had plenty to say to the nutrition personnel about them. Things are wrong everywhere. I push back my chair. Will you come with me? Xander glances at his watch. Where? Class starts soon. I know, I say. We're not going far. Please? All right, Xander says, looking at me with a puzzled expression on his face. I lead him down the hall to the classroom area and push open the door at the end. There, in a small area like a courtyard, is the applicable sciences botany pond. Xander and I are alone. I have to tell him. This is Xander. He deserves to know about Kai, and he deserves to hear it from me, not from an official in a green space, today or some other day. Drawing a deep breath, I look down at the pond. It isn't blue like the pool where we swim. This water is brownish green under its silvery surface, messy with life. Xander, I say, my voice is quiet as if we were hidden in the trees on the hill. I have something to tell you. I'm listening, he says, waiting, looking at me. Always steady, always Xander. It's better to say this quickly before I find myself unable to say it at all. I think I'm falling in love with someone else. I speak so softly, I almost can't hear my own voice, but Xander understands. Almost before I finish, he's shaking his head, saying, No, putting up his hand to stop me before I say more. But it isn't either of those gestures or the word that makes me fall silent. It's the hurt in his eyes. And what they are saying isn't no. It's why. No, Xander says again, turning away from me. I can't bear that. So I move in front of him, trying to see him, too. He won't look at me for a long moment. I don't know what to say. I don't dare touch him. All I can do is stand there, hoping he will look back. When he does, the pain is still there. And something else, too. Something that doesn't look like surprise. It looks like recognition. Did some part of him know this was happening? Is that why he challenged Kai in the games? I'm sorry, I say rushing. You're my friend. I love you too. It's the first time I've said those words to him, and it comes out all wrong. The sound of it hurried and strained makes the words seem like less than they are. You love me too, Xander says, his voice cold. What game are you playing? I'm not playing a game, I whisper. I do love you, but it's different. Xander says nothing.